Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Debbie Sanders, you're first. Morning, Beth Ginsburg. Are you at work? <laughs> you have weird hours. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was soaking up sun, waterfront. It was a tough week. And yes, we are back. Got back yesterday. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website, <clears throat> www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm well rested. We did, like, nothing. We were very, very, very lazy. It was amazing. It was wonderful. We went to... A fairly new campground, a KOA on Currituck Sound, which is um, basically on the Outer Banks in very northeastern North Carolina, just below the Virginia border. Um, can the excessive heat alone cause a dog to have mucusy poop? Yes, 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 yes. That's that's a heat problem. Um, yeah, and the the weather was extremely hot. Our biggest problem while we were there is our RV has three air conditioners. One of them was not working and so in the morning we had all of our sunshades down but in in the afternoon the sun was beaming right down on the windshield and uh, it was 90 degrees every day so I mean, we loved it and there was a nice breeze outside but it was really hard for uh, us to keep the air conditioning in the motorhome down so a lot of times it was 83 and 84 inside the motorhome um, during the day so a little tough on the dogs uh we had to work really hard to keep the dogs comfortable um we did go down to kitty hawk and uh if for anybody who's been to kitty hawk there's this huge hill in the middle with a big monument up top and we wanted to walk up there and we had the dogs with us because we didn't want to leave them in the motorhome so we had three in the wagon and one in a stroller and toted those dogs hauled their butts up that hill. I thought I was going to die. Um, and they they had so much anxiety being in the wagon that I was afraid that uh, um, they were all going to have heat strokes. So after that, it was like, okay, everybody back in the car, sit in the air conditioner, we'll blow air in your face, and we'll just drive around and see things. So yeah, traveling with pets, so much fun. So I wanted to talk about biggest fear with RVs. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, the other two air conditioners worked. Um, and ours actually has uh, an automatic turn on where if the power went out, the generator would kick in and turn the air conditioning on. So we tend not to leave the dogs for any extended length. We did go out to lunch one day at a really nice uh, waterfront restaurant, thanks to Scott Thompson from Florida who told us about it. Um, so that, that was really nice. It was a great place to go for lunch. It was close by, so we didn't have to leave them for long. Um, anyway. Uh, but we had, uh, I read a bunch of books. I, I, I haven't been reading uh, literally for months. Um, and I think I read three or four books this week, so it was really fun. Anyway, um, so we got home, and Gwen was nice enough to take care of the farm and take care of the cats at the house. So she was running back and forth between the office, the house, the barn, a couple times a day. Um, and it was uh, it was a lot for her. And... Um, Baby Sarah's first week at daycare resulted, which was the second week of June, resulted in her catching a cold, which she very nicely gave to my mother and I because we babysat her when she couldn't go to daycare because she was too sick. Um, and it was the Currituck, or Coin Jock Marina is the restaurant. Really nice. Really great. Great prime rib uh, and great seafood. Anyway. And you can watch the boats going in and out of the marina. It's fun. Uh, so uh, my mom and I both got colds, which weren't too horrible, thank goodness. 
Uh, then Sarah's developed into a sinus infection with GI symptoms because she had so much stuff draining down from her head. And uh, that was, so she had to go to the doctors and get antibiotics. Then Brandon developed a stomach thing over the weekend, the first weekend we were gone, re related to it, who knows. But then Gwen developed a, an infection with periorbital cellulitis and had to go to urgent care and get antibiotics. So, you know, that first week of daycare basically made six people sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then my son is visiting from Colorado and staying at Gwen's house. We're hoping he doesn't get sick. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's been really a tough week for Gwen. But during the week when Gwen and I were texting back and forth, she said, pretty sure when I walk in the door through your garage that I can smell cat pee. And I said, oh man, all right. Well, you know, and cats, when they're not happy, they kind of let you know. I said, okay, I'll find it when I get home. Um, I didn't want to add one more thing to Gwen's, um, to, yeah, they are Petri dishes. I didn't want to add one more thing to Gwen's problems by telling her to get down on her hands and knees and search my house and figure out where the cat pee was. Um, and we have three cats, two of which are brother and sister, and they hate each other. You know, when you're raising your kids and they fight, my sister and I fought like cats and dogs. I mean, we, we literally, when we were little, we fought all the time. So I've got a brother who's the 15 pound fat cat mittens. He's the one who uh, tore his ACL last year. And then his little sister is only like five pounds eggplant. And they hiss at each other. They do not like each other at all, even in the best of times. And then there's Buddha, who is only two weeks older than them, um, but he's from a different litter. And we, raise, we hand raised them as babies. They were bottle fed babies from mamas that I had to spay in my office. And, um, he is a schizophrenic nutcase. Like he comes up to you like he wants to be petted. And then if you reach out to pat him, he goes Whoosh! and lets you have it and then runs away. Um, he's drawn blood on my mom so many times. She's like, oh, he's so sweet. I'm like, don't pet the cat, don't pet the cat. Um, it's just his personality and some cats are that way. So the cats staying home by themselves were mad, really mad, apparently. So when we came home, I could smell the cat pee and my sense of smell is very diminished since my head injury almost two years ago. So I was just saying that to Hugh, like I'm really annoyed that I, my sense of smell is decreased because I used to be able to walk into anywhere and say there's cat pee and I could, you know, I was like a tracking dog. I could target that cat pee. And now I can't, I have to really search for it. Well, I could smell it when I walked in the door. I said, oh, this is not a good thing because I can actually smell it. So then I walked in the kitchen, it was even stronger. I said, okay, well, there's cat pee in the kitchen. So after we got everything unloaded and put away, I started looking around and I discovered that one of the cats had very nicely peed on our kitchen counter in the area where we feed the dogs. Okay, I get it, you're mad. We took the dogs with us, we didn't take you. Okay, you marked this area and said, kind of kitty finger to the dogs, kitty finger to the people, not happy with you. Okay, so I scrubbed our countertop to within an inch of its life. Then later in the day, I was like, God, I still smell cat pee. So got my flashlight on my phone and went around all the crevices on the floors because I could smell it by the back door. And luckily when cat pee dries, it sort of crystallizes and we don't have carpet. So it's easy to see where the little crystals are if you get the light exactly right. You can also buy a black light. Black light will shine it very nicely. Um, so I found some dried pee by the door that we go in and out. I'm like, okay, I get it. You're mad. We all left through this door. We haven't come back for a week. You're mad. Got it. So got on my hands and knees and scrubbed that area of the floor. Then later in the evening, I said, I bet there's more. So I took my little light and went around. Oh yeah, our cats give us the kitty finger a lot. Um, so, and I, all right, now I have another story about that because when um, I used to declaw cats years ago and we would use glue, my kids said to me, mom, every time you glue them, the middle toe ends up looking like they're giving you the kitty finger. So my kids actually started that and I'm like, 
I can't, that's just how it glues together. I can't help it. So, you know, there's all these cats running around that were declawed that pretty much <laughs> look like they're doing that. Anyway, so I was on my hands and knees going around the living room and I found on the side of mom's tall secretary, which is up against the wall, some spray. And I'm like, okay, gonna scrub that as well. Now, the reason they go there is because eggplant, there's a catty corner cabinet in that corner right next to the desk. She goes back in there and hides. That's her little den where she gets away from the other two cats. So, and one of the boys did the marking, so was marking and saying, oh no, I'll take over this area. So clean that up too. I'm like, I'm really not liking you guys a whole lot right now. So when I went to bed about 10 o'clock, I'm like, oh, I smell cat pee in the bedroom. Go in our bathroom. Actually, I went to take a shower. And when I got out of the shower, I looked down and I could see crystals on the bathroom floor. I'm like, oh my lord. So scrub the bathroom to within an inch of its life. I'm like, man, you guys are really making me mad. Like, I get it, okay? I've got it. So go to bed. And now my nose is really tuned into cat pee. And all I can smell is cat pee. And I'm just like, oh. So I'm thinking, okay, our suitcases are stored under the bed. I'll bet you those little buggers went on those too, because we took some of the suitcases with us, some not. Of course, at this point, it's 11 o'clock, Hugh's sound asleep, and he had been up late the night before, so I didn't want to wake him up. So I'm like, okay, I can ignore this. I'm getting pillows over my head. Oh, no, yeah, that stuff, Gwen, I'm coming to get some. So <laughs> the unique infusions, pet odor. So... I'm laying there and all I can smell is cat pee. I'm like, I know there's cat pee under our bed. I cannot get up and clean this up at midnight because I don't want to wake up Hugh and the dogs because then I got to take dogs out. That's a whole other thing. So did they come out to talk to us when we got home? No. No. Well, sort of. Uh, mittens came out to mill around. <laughs> Just to kind of say, ha, ha, ha. So I couldn't go to sleep. So I came out and we brought home a mountain of laundry. We'd already done like four or five loads and I knew we had four or five more. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to go work on laundry. So I'm sitting in the kitchen where our washer and dryer are. And I'm like, I still smell cat pee in this kitchen. Get my flashlight, go around the floor, check the cabinet again. I'm like, I scrubbed this cabinet to death. There's none here. Go around the floor, on the floor under the cabinet, it must have dripped off. There's pee on the floor scrub the area of the floor. I'm like, okay, that'll solve the problem. Sit back down. I'm looking at emails and stuff on my phone. I'm like, I still smell cat pee. I can't stand it. So I get my phone and I go again. Then I realize that where they had peed on the counter, it dripped down the cabinets to the floor. Yeah, cat pee is a nasty smell. Can't take it. I, me either, which is why I was happy when I had this good nose. That, except last night, I was not happy that I could smell cat pee, let me tell you. So then I scrubbed the front of the cabinets. Now, the <laughs> I love my four cats, but cats can be a-holes. Yes, exactly. This is what I'm thinking at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I scrubbed the front of the cabinets. Now, I, the one thing I can thank the cats for is our house is getting a deep cleaning because... <sighs> so I scrubbed that, and then I sat down, back down to my phone, and I went, Oh, I don't smell cat pee. I finally found all the sources in the kitchen. Yay! So, and I've gone around the living room with my hands and knees and checked that whole area in the dining room. And so, uh, today, I have to get under our bed and spray down and scrub our suitcases and then climb under the bed and clean the floor. Thank God we don't have carpet. Thank God. But, so the unique infusion stuff that we have on the website is really good. And the way that, I've been using my um, Method Lavender Cleaner, but it... Yes, you smell lavender, but there, it's lavender with a hint of ammonia, even when you're done. Um, that's why you weren't complaining when Reggie's Rebellion was on the washable bathroom rug only. I know. it's So, and that's why we don't have rugs, because if I put down a rug, I, it's going to get peed on by a dog or a cat. They just look at that, and they're like, that's a potty pad. So, And they are trained to potty pads, so I kind of can't blame them. Um, but I've got to go get that unique infusion stuff so that uh, I can, you know, do, basically do the whole house. And so the unique infusions, it doesn't mask it. It's not a, um, it's not uh, a, a scent. It's basically bacteria and enzymes, and the bacteria digest the the 
protein and stuff that's in the urine that's causing the odor. So um, I think by the end of the day, I will have the cat problem solved. Now, do I think it's one guilty cat or a couple? That is a really good question. And I actually said to Hugh, as I was cleaning up like, you know, puddle number 17, um, I said, you know what? I'm gonna give each of these cats some food dye. And then I'm gonna see which color pee I'm cleaning up. And maybe that will give me a hint as to which cat it is because the problem like people used to bring their cats in and say, I've got somebody peeing outside the litter box and I don't know who it is. So we'd have to get urine samples on every cat in the house. Well, if you have six or seven, that's pretty expensive. Um, trying to find one who has a urinary tract infection or has crystals in the urine, you know, for whatever reason, they're having a problem. I know ours are having a problem because they were mad. They were mad. So, uh, yeah, you, it, you can put dyes to see who's doing what. Um, people have uh, fed glitter. It's like if, they're, if they have somebody having diarrhea and they're not sure who it is, you can put glitter in their food and then they'll poop it out and you can see which color glitter comes out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I think the food dyes would work. I'm not quite sure. Um, I might have to give them a lot to get it to work. But, um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I really, I don't know which one it is. Um, I don't know. It might have been all of them. What's the name of that stuff? It's unique. Uh, it's on our website. Gwen posted a link to it in the comments. Um, how do we do it with multiple cats? <laughs> uh, so, and, uh, so as I'm really furious at the cats and I'm threatening to take them out to the farm and let them live in the barn with the, oh, by the way, the new kitties at the farm, the three that we rescued, the ferals, uh, we haven't seen them. We know they're still there because we find mouse body parts and there's poop in the litter box and they're eating the food. But don't see them. They hide really well. But they're there. Um, so, uh, but our house, while we were gone, they came and put a bunch of the cabinetry in and the cat condo cool climbing area, the first part of that is in. And, he, and I'm like, I'm sending these cats outside. They're going to live in the barn. And he's like, do you realize how much we just spent and how much work and design we put into this cat fun place inside the house? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they're little a-holes. <laughs> so I'll, I'll post pictures of that at some point point of that when we get it finished uh, it's going to have like a little swinging bridge for them to jump across and different levels of shelves i'm thinking i'm going to bring gwen's cat edward over to check it out and play with it because he's the most playful of all the cats and the least likely to cause destruction <laughs> uh your cat drank commode water this morning and she's due to get spayed can she still get spayed yeah yeah you can um yeah Friend's cat was mad when she got another dog. They put him in a very large cage and retrained him at work. Yeah, we have we've had that problem. It's like when Gwen would come to visit with all of her uh, uh, dogs and cats and everybody at our old house, our cats would mark. Um, they don't like having their their little apple cart upset. So um, next time we go away and we have to leave the cats alone, there's going to be some CBD and some pet essences. I think some uh, sibling rivalry and maybe some. I don't know, life's changes or mellow out or something. I have to figure it out. Um, yeah, Edward will love it. Um, and I think CBD a couple times a day to just chillax their little kitty brains and stop their little kitty bladders from being a problem. So anyway, that's the saga of coming home from vacation. And Hugh and I just looked at each other and said, you know, it's performance punishment and I used to say that at work like you go away on vacation and when you come back you have six times more work to do it's almost not worth it <laughs> it's not worth it um 16 year old kitty pooping outside the box when you're gone on weekends camping not far from home pop in and clean the litter box and feed uh used to share successfully well it could be stress but when we have old kitties like that that are starting to poop outside the box definitely consider that they might be having some arthritis pain um, climbing in and out of the box for old kitties, uh, are, um, can be, can be difficult. So sometimes you have to have a lower edge on the litter box for them. Um, or you may want to go ahead and start them on something for, um, for, uh, 
for arthritis. Um, we have Kitty Cosequin on the website, which is really nice. Um, helps with bladder problems, but also helps with the arthritis. Um, our deer antler velvet wellness formula is good for cats as well as dogs and really good for arthritis. So when I see older kitties that are starting to have kitty box problems and it, the pooping tends to be the problem with the arthritis cats, whereas peeing outside the box, that's usually urinary or kidney. Okay, everybody have a wonderful day. We're going to go to the farm and do things like clean out the chicken coop because, you know, I, I could only ask Gwen to do so much. <laughs> And I'm thankful it's raining because the garden is fried. Our water was cut off for a couple of days. They had to dig across the driveway for electric and water and gas lines. Um, so we had no water for a couple of days at the farm. So yeah, you can use PEA for cats for sure. Uh, supporters, seven o'clock tonight. Not sure what we're doing. Don't know if I'm presenting uh, something or if uh, it'll be an Ask Me Anything. It'll depend uh, what my day turns out to be, <laughs> how much time I have. <laughs> Wellness formula really helps your senior kitty good. Yeah, the cats like it too. They'll, they'll usually eat it as a treat. Working through Griffin's heart, it's a wonderful hearing experience, healing experience. Oh yeah, Teresa, absolutely appropriate for you right now. Um, would be really good for Denise Newland. For those of you who don't know, she just lost her second dog in three weeks, uh, cancer. I think her first one was heart disease and this one was cancer. Really hard, really hard. All right, see you guys tonight.